welcome to this module of Professor Messer's free CompTIA a certification training course on common port numbers. I'm James Messer. And in this module, we're going to go through the requirements from 220-701. And in section 4.1, we need to learn more about networking fundamentals. And specifically, we need to know common port numbers for these very common protocols. We're going to learn all about what port numbers are and specifically what the port numbers are for these protocols later in this module. Let's start, though, by getting an understanding of what are ports? What are these port numbers? You've got all of these different protocols going out over the network. And in the world of IP communication, you have something called TCP and UDP. And all of these things need certain pieces of information to be able to communicate. We need to know what the IP address is of the server that we're communicating to. And on that server, there is something called a port number that, dis that is an opening that our machine is able to communicate into that device. So it's a little window that's open on that computer. And whenever we send information into that window, that computer knows, oh, that's, that's for that particular service. That's for the web server that I'm running on this computer. And then it communicates back to us with our client IP address and a specific port number, usually one that we just pick at random or that we pick sequentially. The numbers on our client machines don't matter as much as the numbers on our servers. And when we learn today port uh, these, these very common port numbers, we're talking about the common port numbers used on these servers. There's also this concept of non-ephemeral ports. These are port numbers that are permanent. And they're always on a server. If we communicate to a web server, we always expect that web server to be running on port 80. It's something that we've all sat around on the internet and we've decided, you know what? If it's a web server, let's make sure everybody, we're going to run everybody we're going to run a web server on port 80. Whenever you talk to a web server, it should always be on port 80. If somebody's running a web server on something other than port 80, it's because they're doing something completely non-standard. Perhaps that's normal for what they're doing, but it doesn't let us know that that's how we should communicate. Whenever we talk, type in a, in a browser, google.com, it goes out to google.com on port 80 because that's what we all understand that web server to be running on. And it is a permanent port number. It does not change. It does not go away. On our local machine, our client machine, when we communicate to Google, we're usually on our machine communicating over a temporary port number or an ephemeral port. This is determined as soon as we decide to send the packet. So we type in www.google.com and we send it off. And since it's the first time we're communicating to Google, our computer decides, you know what, let's use port number 1234 and our machine, and we'll communicate out to port 80 on Google. And when it gets over to Google, Google says, OK, I'm going to send that traffic back to 1234. And our computer recognizes, oh, that's the answer to the question that we just asked to Google. And that's how all of our machines are able to send this information and go back and forth and keep everything straight behind the scenes. It's all done with these port numbers. We have a wide range of numbers that we can use for ports. Anything between 0 and 65,535 can be a port number. So we picked port 80 for web servers. That was an easy one. But it could have been any one of these numbers. Almost always on a server, we're using these non-ephemeral port numbers. But it's not always the case. As I mentioned, if you wanted to bring up a web server and run that web server over port 4444, knock yourself out. That's perfectly fine with me. I won't know how to connect to that web server unless you tell me it's running on port 4444. But at the end of the day, it's just a number. We just happen to choose 80. But it really could have been any number. There's no rhyme or reason to it other than it was the next one in the list that we chose. They're always going to be used for communication, though. Just to, if you use a different port number other than 80 and you made it 4444, well, maybe my browser doesn't know that it's there. But there's ways that I could tell where that web server is running on. Just because you put it on a different port number does not make it more secure. I can still access it over 4444. And with a little bit of investigation, it's very easy for me to see that a web server is running on that port number. So even though it's not obvious, security by obscurity is not really security. So you don't want to be obscure with this. If you really need security, you need to do something above and beyond what changing a port number might do for you. To be able to have our browsers communicate out to these servers, to be able to have our FTP servers communicate out to these machines, that we all need to decide on the same numbering scheme. And that's why we have these common port numbers, is that everybody has created these well-known port numbers for these applications. Also keep in mind that the TCP protocol and the UDP protocol are completely different protocols. They still use port number ranges between 0 and 65535. But a TCP port number 80 
and a UDP port number 80 are completely different things. Even though they have the same port number associated with them, TCP is in its own little world, UDP is in its own little world, and you need to keep them separated in your mind.